G'day champions. Today we've got a reverb rocket and an Ampeg made in the USA combo. This one's completely dead. No current draw, no lights, nothing. So let's whack it out of its heavy ass cabinet and have a geese. We'll check the usual things like uh, the speaker and the reverb tank just to make sure we're not in for this more than expected. Once we repair the issue of, uh, well I'm assuming a blown fuse, we can uh, be sure that we won't get any hidden little gotchas later on. So join us for the ride. Well, that's always a worry. We've got one, two, three, four, five Phillips screws. And there's one little rusty flathead screw, you know, the type that hasn't been used by anyone who knows what they're doing since 1943. So if someone's going to use that screw, I, I often say this, um, if you see something silly from the outside, chances are there's some really silly shit on the inside. So, <laughs> let's see. Alright, so back cover's off and it's got construction pretty reminiscent, I guess, of a hot rod sort of deluxe type build. I don't see many of these, in fact I think this is the first one I've ever looked at. Uh, they're not that common in Australia, so... Not as, a, as common as the Fender ones, anyway. So yes, we certainly have a blown fuse. You can see there, F1, open in the center. And there's what appears to be bulgy caps, but I see a lot of guys get excited about that. Oh, look, the caps are busted. You push that little dome down, and it, you can feel the actual top of the cap isn't bulgy. That's just the plastic disc that's on top. So chances are that's not the, the issue. Oh, that's cute, isn't it? Got little layers of foam to support the little valveys. It's funny um, seeing how the, each manufacturer comes up with their own little way of, of uh, shock mounting valves when there's just this stuff you can just get on the uh, off the shelf, you know. Anyway, how will they earn their bonus if they don't save three cents? So, first thing we'll do, as usual, check for voltage. Stray voltage, turn everything on. That's one plate, 0.2 of a volt. 0.2 of a volt. Bugger all, mate. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, this thing takes up most of my video bench. Uh, I probably have to get another tripod and another camera and another mic and all of that so I can have a overhead and then a separate mic, uh, separate camera without having to take that down all the time. Oh, but, you know, do you think I made of money? Uh, so anyway, this thing, the control panel, we'll just go over it. Um, so it's got a guitar input. It's got an accordion input because apparently that's the thing. Even though it's not Oktoberfest yet, it's coming. Uh, <laughs> usual game volume, treble, mid, bass, master and reverb. And then it's got your line out and line in similar to uh hot rod uh series or you know hot rod deluxe blues deluxe deville whatever and it's got a big chunk chunk switch for uh which channel so i'm guessing that's uh switching the gain control in and out of the circuit but yeah i'll have a look because like i say i haven't had one of these on the bench before and you stand by and you're off on an off switch and your pilot light so here's the chassis on the bench. Um, you know, single-sided construction, looks reasonably well built. Um, all the caps are sort of sitting on an angle with all the schmoo shoved under them. We got Weimar caps, which is good to see. Uh, Samoa radials, which is meh, neither here nor there. Got a big Nichicon radial there, which is cool. Quick connects every there, everywhere, sorry. Um, that one's looking okay. We'll check the heater one, see what they look like. That one just popped off. And that's for the lamp, so that's not our culprit. But that is super loose. Like, way loose. Um, like, someone's jammed it open loose. So I might have to recrimp that, but we'd probably replace the whole lamp anyway. At the moment, I'm just figuring out what's going on to get them a quote. Um, I've checked the diodes, none of them are short. So someone's replaced R46 at some point because you can see they've cut away at the glue. And the leads are a little bit mangled and it's up in the air, which is fine, but there's no actual crimps on that. It seems to be rather sturdy still though. 
if we go ahead we'll we'll fix that update because that resistor is too heavy to be relying on the solder connections alone on a through plated board so similar uh, similar to the hot rod series it's got ribbon connectors going to the bottom valve board um, these are those like film ribbon connectors which are even more of a pain in the ass than just the, the uh, ribbon wire um, they have little almost like crimped connectors on the end that pins on the end that go through and um, if they snap off well you're replacing the whole connector because you can't just cut a bit off and take the insulation off on these you've got to replace all the wires at once so they're they're painful you don't want to break them well, now we've got some better lighting there is our blown fuse which is the mains fuse and appears to be the only fuse all right so i've just removed the uh little valve retainer there on the 6l6s and we'll just have a look at the sockets check there's no arcing or anything no snapped off pins or anything crazy and we're looking good check the preamps again they've got those rubber grommet things that just turn to dust i have to clean that out now i think the bit just fell in the speaker yay that's these things the rubber's just not not the right rating, it just perishes straight away. In the bin. In the bin. And all the pram valves have vacuum. That's good. So um this is a bit difficult working on this like this, so I might stand it up for a sec. See what I can find. Man, that steel is really uh flimsy. It's like 0.6 mil steel. Uh, all right, this thing's taking up a whole bench, so it's it's messing up my uh, camera kung fu a little bit. But so we've got the variac here, got the power meter on the wall over there, zero watts, obviously. We'll flick this little bugger on. We'll turn both switches on, turn the shit box on. It's on as low as it can go, and we've got seven watts. Bring it up ever so slightly, and it goes through the roof. Twenty four, twenty five watts, and that was like not even hitting the 20 volt mark uh, okay so let's just go one by one we'll disconnect this secondary and bring her up she's still shooting up we'll reconnect that one disconnect that one And she's still shooting up with barely any input voltage, so we'll reconnect that one. Eh. Disconnect that one. And that's okay. So we must have a short on J26, J27, which is the high voltage input, even though it was tested by Earl D. Good on you, Earl. Hope you're doing well. So there's J26 and J27. Goes through a bridge rectifier, takes a tap over there for the uh, capacitively coupled bias supply, and goes to the HT supply. So we've got a bleeder resistor there, 2 watt, 150k. That's our first filter cap, 100 microfarad, 450 volt. And then we've got a standby switch, which goes up to the uh, next node which is the screen supply so the quickest way to isolate if it's anything with uh, this cap is just turn the standby switch off and see if that affects it so standby switch off power on all secondaries reattached and bring up the variac and we're shooting through the roof again so I think even though I gave Nichicon praise, we might have a shorted filter cap from Nichicon, which I've got to admit is a first for me. So I might run with that and send a price to the customer and factor in a bit of margin because we are, uh, chances are, with any amp that won't fire up. Uh, we'll check the reverb tank, the speakers, but um, any amp that won't fire up, they'll go, yeah, it was fine. It worked perfectly, perfectly, and then it stopped. They never work perfectly. There's always secondary issues that either the customer's intentionally trying to conceal, so it's our problem once we discover them, or 
they just don't remember the problems because it had failed a reasonably long time ago. I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt and assume the latter. However, it seems to happen so often that people come in with dead amps. Oh, it was working perfectly. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> have you got evidence of that? Because um, almost every time we fix the major fault, there's underlying faults, and then you've got to start an argument with the customer, which is always fun. Um, so yeah, we just sort of factor in a little bit of extra there and if there's nothing else wrong, then so be it. But I find it pretty rare that there's absolutely nothing else wrong with an amp. Gooped by Tom. <laughs> Tom's a professional gooper. Job well done, Tom. Have your mother's proud. <laughs> All right, instead of doing some guesswork, let's, uh, whack the knobs off. <laughs> and pull this circuit board out and we'll just swap that cap out and just check that everything else is hunky-dory after that. They are really stiff, plastic shafted. It's like the plastic bonds to itself after a while. Just gently use my double spoon trick. Ping. Just carefully rock them a little bit, help them let go. And they've got those crazy, weird, little, tiny plastic shaft Ampeg pots with the tiny little nuts on them. Uh, not meant for the road, eh? And hard to get. If you're in a pinch, you could probably drill it out and replace it with something a bit more standardised because they look like a standard 18 or 16 mil pot body. Um, but yeah, it's just another extra bit of work when they could have just used an off-the-shelf pot. And a 9 mil tube socket fits that 9mm why not and for the jacks 11mm doesn't fit 12mm is too loose but sort of works 7 16th is like just trying to grab but too small And half inch is too big. <laughs> what the fuck size is it then? Oh my god. I'm going with 12 mil. They look like your standard cliff jacks, but I seem to remember 12 mil being a little bit tighter on them in the past, like in a good way. Less pl less backlash, less play. Don't know. Maybe I just remembered incorrectly. It has been known to happen. Now, here's the fun part. Unlike, uh, well, Blue's Deluxe, Hot Rod Deluxe series, DeVille, whatever, where you can take the board down uh, with a bit of difficulty, but you can swing it out and the pots actually make it past the chassis. The lip up there. Not the case with this one. Nowhere near it. You see, that's bottomed out against the components and that still needs to come down another half inch or so. So you'd have to remove all the valves, remove the bottom valve board, slide that out as well, uh, disconnect everything. Time consuming. Yay. So a closer look at the valves, we've got two Sovtec 5881s. The writing's pretty much vaporized off the right hand one, so we could have a problem there. So yeah, I've got a feeling this one on the right's gotten too hot at some point. But we'll find the source of the full-on short circuit first and go from there. Like I say, there's almost never a single problem. It's like rare that it's any device has got a single problem. There's almost always multiple issues. All right, so to add insult to injury, all these uh, screws here... Uh, Loctited as well as a lock washer on a nut. Now it's spinning and it's a real pain to remove and it almost feels like I'm going to snap the screw. Joy! I think these might be another one on the shit list. Uh, other guys that see these every day are probably laughing at me going, oh. Anyway, we'll see how we go. Yep, as suspected, one sheet off screw. Because of the stupid fuckwit that put it in in the first place. 
Uh, there's no way to undo it. You got Loctite on that one, you got Loctite on the under one. Now it's snapped off. And I can't, oh yeah, that's come out. So I'll have to remove that stud. There we go, they use so much Loctite on it that it's all crusty. Never to be undone. All right, this is interesting. So R46, 470 ohm, five watt. R46 here is 1K, five watt. But on the other side, someone's put another 1K in parallel with it. So instead of buying one of the most commonly used five watt resistors on the market and having them in stock, they've used two 1Ks and just tack soldered that on the back. Lovely. Got you, you little bastard. That's the uh, capacitor that couples the bias supply to the HT supply. And she's dead short circuit. And that was causing a short to ground. And I'll show you why in just a second. Hear that annoying beep? That means she's a dead short. So we'll stick a new Panasonic in there. And see how she goes. And well, we've got the valve board out with just a inspect the solder connections on there and as you can see almost everyone's cracked so this is where the secondary problems occur so first problem yeah blowing fuses fix that problem okay it crackles why does it crackle solder connections on board that's difficult to remove and you have to shear screws off to remove so are you going to be happy with the crackling once the fuse blowing has been uh, addressed i don't think so so i fixed the fault that it came in for uh but then there's underlying issues so yeah nothing's ever one problem like ever ever all right so i've got sick of working on it uh in the box so uh, we've got to take it out anyway to give this thing a full clean the owners opted for what i like to call the amp day spa where we fully take the thing apart give it a proper clean um, literally wash the outside of the cabinet and do what we can with the inside take the reverb tank bag out although I believe this one's stapled at the back which is which is nice so we might be able to get under it but um there's the inevitable uh, multiple screw holes there from various techs forgetting where the screw went and they replaced the reverb tank that's <laughs> Pretty well on every amp that comes in here. We might hard solder the speaker connections because I don't like these things and they're pretty loose. The rivets are intact, which is nice for an OEM eminence. Uh, the OEM eminence speakers, you can see with that little label there, they all look the same. Uh, and often these these rivets literally corrode away to dust and uh, the tag falls off. You've got to drill out the hole, re-rivet it. Uh, but all that's looking in good shape. The baffle looks okay. There's a little bit of a crack there I'll just check that that's not pulling away. Let's check that all the speaker uh, fixings are tight Sounds like there might be a bit of looseness there. So we'll, we'll address that clean up the cockroach carcasses and egg sh egg casings is pretty much customary in every amp <laughs> and uh, See what we can do with the grill cloth Which I think had a bit of wear there, but you know, it just adds to the charm, eh? But it's not too bad. Just dusty, really. So we'll we'll give the thing a good clean. But we'll get it off the bench for now. So we can go back to our nice little camera angle there. You've probably never seen the camera, actually, have you? There it is. That's where the magic happens.